Hi, this is Kevin Trainer, and uh, this will be the welcome lecture for uh, Senior Capstone uh, Section 201 online for the spring of 2016. And uh, right here on our screen, we're peeking at the uh, sort of the landing page for our course on uh, D2L. And um, we've done something a little different on D2L for this uh, semester. Uh, if you click on the content tab, or when you click on the content tab, uh, you'll see that on the uh, table of contents, uh, it's organized... Um, the first uh, section has a copy of the syllabus, then uh, the next has the weekly course schedule, and then the next is the schedule for week one, uh, just a link to it. And if you look at the weekly course schedule, it, it, it's really an HTML page that is an index of all the weekly schedules that are actually kept on another uh, site. Uh, and the uh, URL for the site is uh, courseinfo.ligent, L-I-G-E-N-T dot net. So um, we lose a little bit in the styling of this uh, page due to uh, the vagaries of uh, inserting HTML into a D2L page. But the link for the week that you want to take a look at is uh, is the bold week number. So if we want to look at week number one, we click on the numeral one. And that takes us to the schedule for week one. And of course, that's where we are right now. So let's take a peek at what's in week one. Well, there are, uh, well, let's just uh, kind of, let's uh, kind of explore the schedule website all by itself. So uh, there's a navigation bar and uh, we're on week one and we're able to navigate to adjacent weeks by uh, clicking on the next link. So that'll get us to week two, and then next will get us to week three, all the way up to week 17, which is the last week of the semester. And then, uh, when appropriate, there's a previous link. Okay, and then there's an index page. So this is the real version of the index page for uh, uh, the weekly schedules. So as you can see, there are 17 weeks in the semester the last two of which are primarily um, um, uh, it, 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 the exam period days. Okay, so uh, it's really the first uh, 15 of which are uh, potential uh, teaching weeks. Okay, so uh, you can bookmark this. Um, index of weekly schedule pages for this course. Um, and you can come here directly, uh, or you can always uh, find your way here through our uh, D2L page. Uh, but this is where I'm going to be maintaining the schedule over the course of the semester. Um, it, if we take a peek at week two, we'll see I don't have the is scheduled up for weeks uh, 2 through 17 yet, although they should be up by the end of the week. Okay, so let's go back to previous and take a look at the schedule for week 1. Um, the first thing that I have is there's an online drop-in session every Monday evening from 6.30 to 7.20. And we had our first yesterday evening, and we had a handful of people. We had a nice uh, conversation. This is an optional session, and it's um, 
meant as a time to um, ask questions, explore issues having to do with the class, meet me, meet other people in the class. This is going to be especially important as we form teams and get them organized uh, in the first uh, third of the semester, although I'm going to run them all semester long. And um, I invite you to come by and say hi. Um, the second thing they have here is, even though this is an online course, um, I do have on-campus office hours on Thursdays from 3 to 5 in my SOAS office. And, of course, even though you're in an online course, you're welcome to come by. Uh, so I put that on the calendar so you'd know it was there. And then the uh, third um, item on the calendar for the week uh, is the grouping of weekly assignments. So the week is going to run from Monday through Sunday. So this week is over at the very end of Sunday, um, uh, January 31st. And to the extent that things have to be handed in or done by a certain time, I've uh, put together a deadline. So it's 11.55 p.m. on Sunday. Um, there are no hand-ins for the week, so there is not a... Uh, there isn't going to be, a, for instance, the Moodle drop... Uh, Moodle, sorry. D2L Dropbox... Uh, uh, with that time and date on it, but there will be in subsequent uh, weeks. But you're expected to get all this done by the end of the week. So what's going on this week? Well, um, in this uh, session here, we're going to have the welcome lecture, and then there'll be two more lectures, um, separate recordings, uh, one for chapter one of the Leighton book and one for chapter two of the Leighton book. Okay? So before we get into the content of the course, I wanted to talk about the expectations for it. And the best way to do that is to walk through the syllabus. So I have a copy of the syllabus uh, here. And I want to open it up. And so here's the syllabus. And let's just kind of walk through the basic stuff. This is uh, section 201, the online section. Um, you'll notice that I have my information, uh, which includes my name, my email address, my mobile phone, and the number of my office at SOAS. And um, you're welcome to contact me freely. I give out this information, and so far, students haven't worn me out. So um, I'm not always available to talk. I'm certainly available during uh, published office hours or the hours of uh, kind of like online drop-in sessions and those kinds of things. But... Um, if you call me or you come to find me and I don't have time then, we'll arrange another time. Uh, and certainly if you need to arrange a time to meet with me or to uh, talk with me, um, you can do that through email. Uh, the drop-in sessions are described uh, uh, here. And since I've already talked about them, I won't talk about them further. The same for office hours. Um, then we get into a description of the course and uh, a couple of key points that I like to make about the course. Uh, one is it's, uh, it's a culmination, because it's a uh, capstone, it's a culmination of your work in the BIST program. Okay, so um, it it should be, uh, it should represent that work well. Okay. Now we're going to form teams 
and we're going to find a real client for each team and we're going to help them solve a problem or capitalize an opportunity that they have in their organization uh, with uh, some kind of computer-based uh, information system. And the responsibility of the team will be to gather the requirements for that system to construct the solution um, and to get the, um, get the users installed on in using the solution. So, um, uh, one focus, it being a culminating experience. Focus two, uh, it's a real project with a real team for a real client. Okay. And focus three is it's an opportunity to learn about project management and to apply that to a real project. Okay. So it's got three areas of focus that are all wrapped up in this one experience. Uh, there's one textbook, and uh, I apologize for the title. It's called Agile Project Management for Dummies. It's a required text. It's pretty affordable. Um, it's easy to read. Uh, it's not an academically oriented text. It's a text for uh, practitioners in the field, and I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, so, um, and if you need to get it quickly, there are uh, you can you can buy an e-copy of it online in a number of places and get access to it immediately. And it's not that big of a book, so not hard to read as an ebook, even if you're not an ebook fan. Um, it's uh, traditional for us to talk about the software that we're going to use in, in the course next, so that's what I've done. Um, primarily, the software we're going to use in the course is the software that your team is going to use to uh, conduct your project and to build your system. Okay, now um, the uh, technological path of least resistance for your team will probably be to use the kind of tools to build your system for your client that we've been using, using in the um, program at SOAS all along. So at SOAS, we've been using the LAMP stack, um, and each of the students has a SOAS web space that gives them access to the LAMP uh, stack of tools. And one of the things that I'm going to do is to have created for your team a web space for your team. So if, in fact, you're going to be using... Um, uh, software compatible with the LAMP stack, instead of using uh, the account of one of your members and having to share passwords, um, you'll have a common account with a common ID and password, and you'll be able to do it like that. Okay? Uh, two, um, we're going to be learning about Agile Project Management, and Agile Project Management has a, a couple of hallmarks, but one of the most important ones is it's it's kind of lightweight. Okay, so it's it tries to uh, keep the paperwork to a minimum, and there is a software product that's used as a uh, project information system for agile projects that you can use to both to plan and to track your team's work on an agile software develop, development project. Uh, and that project is called Jira Agile. And the people who uh, make uh, Jira Agile Atlassian software have been good enough to give us a free copy for our use here in the course. So, 
Um, I am going to be working with you to get you familiar with the Jira Agile software. And also, I'm going to set up each of the teams with, uh, with uh, IDs and a project account and all those things so that you can use that to track your work. Now, there's a lot of other software that you might use during the project. Um, and that's really going to be up to your team to decide um, and for your team to acquire. Although, if you need help in acquiring it, I will, I will help. Um, and that reminds me, when I'm, to, I'm thinking about people who can help you, uh, when I went through the... Uh, top of the resume and identified uh, myself, uh, we do have a TA for the course this uh, semester, and her name is Holly Leto, L-E-T-O, and her email address is hkleto at uwm.edu. And Holly was in this uh, class uh, at the end of her work in, in the BIST last uh, semester, and she's in the beginning of the MS uh, LIS uh, program now, and she's going to help me both with grading and with uh, support. So um, she's a person you can contact as well, and um, so uh, feel free to do that. So, course objectives, let's say I've listed three. Understand Agile project management and how it's different from more traditional approaches to project management. That's something we're really going to do by uh, reading the Leighton book and discussing it in terms of uh, the projects that we're going to do. Uh, to apply Agile project management concepts by working on an Agile, in an Agile project team as an active contributor, well, we're going to do a project. It's a great opportunity to do that. And three, apply systems analysis, database design, user interface design, and other techniques learned in the BISD program while implementing your project. Okay, so... Um, it's important to do a project here, but while we're doing it, I don't want to forget about all the stuff we learned in the program. Um, I would like this project to be a good representative of how we do things at SOAS. Okay, so um, if we're writing HTML, it's good HTML. If we're writing CSS, it's good CSS. If we're... Um, Writing a PHP page, it's good PHP. If we're designing a database, uh, it's a uh, normalized, multi-table, well-designed uh, database that we uh, created from a relational data model. Okay? So I just want to do a good job. So we can point to it and show people uh, what we've learned and how well we've done. One of the real values that I see for the course is that it should give each of you the opportunity to have uh, something to show prospective employers and something to talk about with them. Uh, typically, when you are interviewing um, if people would like to come at you with a string of uh, technical questions. And um, there really are two problems there. One is, is that the questions are often hypothetical. Um, and uh, they're kind of endless, right? Uh, so... Uh, what I find really works in doing well in these interviews is being able to latch on to some of the questions as they go by and to be able to do a really good job of them by talking about an example um, from your work life. And this is 
your work life. So uh, a question will come up and you can say, well, let me talk about a project that we did in the senior capstone and you know, here's what I did, here's what we did, here's what we used, blah, blah, blah. So it, gave, it gives you something uh, quite good to um, talk about uh, at the same time that it takes the pressure off of having to answer technical question after technical question uh, about uh, hypothetical things, which I think is kind of a losing game. So, you know, we're building an experience uh, that you can talk about in a very positive way. What are the methods we use in the course? Well, reading in the Leighton book, uh, lectures, uh, recorded ones in the online section like this one here, uh, discussion, uh, which can go on uh, in a couple of ways. It can go on in the um, D2L, in uh, discussion forums, uh, and it can go on in the drop-in session, which is the reason that I have it. And, of course, there'll be a lot of discussions amongst the members of your team. And then, of course, the project itself. Uh, I've already shown you the uh, Course Info website that uh, holds the schedule. I will eventually take the content from that and print out a PDF copy and attach it to the syllabus and post a complete final printed copy of the syllabus. But um, regardless, the place to find a a definitive answer uh, to what's on the schedule is to go to the Course Info website either directly or by using the link on our D2L page. Uh, the workload for the course is really going to depend upon uh, uh, a couple of things. First of all, there are really two parts of the course. You can really think of the first part of the course. It's going to take about a third of the time. Uh, and during that time, uh, we are going to learn about Agile project management. And we're going to get ready and organized for the projects that we're going to do. Okay, and that'll keep us pretty busy. It'll be a uh, a typical uh, course, right? We'll have things to read, we'll have things to discuss, uh, all that kind of stuff, okay? And then um, at the dividing line of approximately a third of the course, we're going to shift gears and we're going to pick our projects, form our teams, and start working on our projects. At that point, the typical reading and lecturing and uh, discussing the, uh, the topics from the readings, that's all going to uh, uh, calm down and we're going to get into working on our project. Okay, typically teams who are working on their project meet uh, at least uh, twice a week. And they typically do that on things like uh, Google Hangouts, go to meeting, uh, Skype, all those kinds of things. And again, I'm going to leave you to your own devices to set up the means by which your team's going to meet. But if you need help, you can certainly contact me and I'll, I'll do my best to, to help. Um, participation is going to be an important part of the grade for this course. Uh, we'll get into the grading in just a couple of minutes and, and you'll see that there's a, uh, a pretty big percentage of the grade, the final grade, that is allocated to your participation in the course. And that is going to be a combination of uh, your uh, participating in, in forums, 
Uh, you do have the option to participate by coming to the drop-in session, although that's not required. Um, and then the big deal, participating in your team and your project. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, one of the things that we do in order to measure uh, what kind of participation each of you will have had in your project team is at the end of the course, we do evaluations. And I ask each of you to evaluate your own participation and those of the peers who are on your team. Okay, and uh, it's not a beauty contest, as as uh, as I like to say. Uh, what I'm looking for are uh, I'm looking to say uh, most people are just going to do a good, solid job. You know, they're going to do their job, and you'll give them a rating that reflects that. Some people will do an exceptional job. Um, you know, we don't always have time available to do an exceptional job, okay? So a few people will do an exceptional job. A few people will do sort of a light job. And then some people will just get lost, okay? Um, and what I'm going to want you to do is to give me feedback accordingly. Now, I don't want to find out in the end of the course that some people have gotten lost and not contributed, and this is the first time I've heard about it, okay? If your team is having a hard time with one of the members, or if you're a member who's having a hard time engaging with your team, I want to hear from you soon, not late. Exams, or exam, there'll be one exam on the Layton book about Agile Project Management. It'll be a midterm, because as you remember, we're going to be done with the Layton book um, well before the first half of the course. So it's going to be a 50-question, multiple-choice, open book exam administered through the D2L quiz feature, um, you can refer to your book, you can refer to your notes, you can refer to the internet. Um, you have to do it on your own. You can take as many attempts as you would like, and you'll get the highest of your scores, and it's open for a week. Let me say this, people who have read the book and followed along and who really want to know about Agile Project Management uh, can pretty much get a high score on the exam as they want to, okay? Uh, people who do not read the book or read the book at the very last second or forget to take an attempt at the exam when it first opens up, they might not do well. But there's no excuse for not doing as well on the exam as you would like to do. This brings us to the project, which I've described here as the team uh, project. Okay, so um, there's a lot of different aspects of the project, and I'm not probably not going to talk about it in the same order that the words appear on the syllabus, but let me talk about a couple of aspects of it. Uh, I've already said it's a culminating project, so it should represent the work that we do at SOAS well, okay? In particular, it should represent our ability to understand the requirements that people have for computer-based information systems, and it realize the requirements, okay? So, um, what kind of things could we do? Well, most teams do some kind of a web-based solution 
to uh, common problems for organizations that one of the team members probably already knows. Okay? Teams, uh, what's the size of a team? Uh, average of four people, maybe as big as six, maybe as small as two, although two is very, very small. Um, bigger than six, it gets pretty un unwieldy. Okay? Um, we tend to find people who, at a minimum, when I say people, I mean clients, we tend to find the clients who, at a minimum, would like a website. Okay? Well, could we just do a website? Well, do you think that really represents our program and what we do within our program? I, I think that's a part of what we do here, but it's certainly not all of what we do. Okay? So, um, most of the projects have included some kind of web content. Okay? Now, um, then we've got the question, uh, are we also going to include custom functionality for uh, content management? Well, some teams have, have actually built content management capabilities into their solution such that their uh, client is going to be able to use the features to uh, keep the content in the website up to date. Okay? Um, what some teams have done is that they've said, well, in order to make that possible, um, we want to base our solution on a platform like WordPress. Okay? And I've allowed people to do that. Um, one of the teams last semester wanted to put together an e-commerce uh, solution. They based um, their project on a uh, platform for e-commerce applications. And most of the work that they did was in the configuration and the deployment of the application, and not so much in the creation of the software itself. So exactly how much the team does um, really is uh, something that I don't want it to be trivial. I don't want it to be just a static website, okay? Um, it, does, it could include content management as uh, it's uh, as the part of the project that gives it uh, sufficient depth, or it could include some other features. It, generally speaking, some feature of the solution has to have a kind of a database uh, CRUD functionality. You need to be able to add things. You need to be able to change things. You need to be able to delete things, okay? Um, typically, to be able to do that, you need to be able to authorize users, and then users have to be able to authenticate, and they need to be able to um, have authorization to do certain functions in the system, okay? So that's the kind of character that we're looking for. Um, uh, uh, of course, to the extent that people, teams are building these things from scratch out of, say, PHP, well, then uh, they can get a certain amount done. To the extent that they're going to build them out of uh, pre-made parts, to the extent that they're going to build them out of... Uh, WordPress, uh, for instance, well, then I'm going to expect them to do more because, uh, you know, you're building less on the infrastructure side. Um, one of the things that, you know, that I don't want is e even on a WordPress kind of a project, I don't want something that just has web pages, okay? We need to have something that has 
database CRUD functionality. You know, you need uh, users have to be able to uh, uh, sign up to be on the mailing list or uh, sign up for a seminar or subscribe to something or other. Okay, so we need some challenge in it. And uh, you guys are going to discover what you're going to do. And to the extent that you've got the questions about, is this sufficiently challenging? Well, pose it to me and we'll discuss it. And we always seem to be able to work it out. Okay, great. Um, so, uh, interestingly, this says attendance and participation. And of course, uh, I must have copied this from the other section. So, because this is an online course, I should probably correct that. So, it's participation both individual and team based. Okay, then, and that's going to be 15% of the grade. Um, and I talked about the components of uh, uh, participation. And then uh, we have the midterm exam, and that's going to be 35% of the grade. And then we have the project itself is going to add up to half the grade. Okay, and... Um, of that half uh, uh, of the 50% that that adds up to, 30% is going to be credit for the system itself. Just how big is it? How well built is it? How well documented is it? Um, uh, how complete and and uh, and uh, and tested does it seem to be? Um, Five of those uh, percentage points come from just the quality of the demo that you do. We're going to do uh, online teams are asked to do a demonstration video, okay, uh, and uh, of approximately a half hour, maybe a little bit shorter, maybe a little bit longer. And then there's a written report, a project uh, report. So there'll be requirements for each of these and a grading rubric, rubric uh, published um, as part of the materials for the course. Now, I just want to point out that because these are group projects, there's a concern on my part, and probably there should be on yours, that perhaps people will join your team and they won't really contribute um, and won't really be entitled to all of the credit for the work that the team does because they're freeloading, okay? So one of the things that I, I try to get out of the peer uh, feedback is... Uh, identifying people who uh, disappeared and, uh, and did not really make a contribution or made a very insignificant contribution. Now, I don't see this as a gotcha, okay? Um, I want everybody to make a contribution. If they're not, then I want us to work it out. So I don't want to get to the end and have to mark uh, people down and the amount of the team credit that they're going to get for these uh, project deliverables uh, because of the fact that they have been a non-participant. Okay, so I just want to hold that out there as a potential remedy for non-participation, uh, but I want to hold us all responsible for not getting to that problem. And my experience is that when we set this expectation ahead of time, we get very little non-participation. There's always some of it that goes around, and, and I, it's unfortunate, but it's true. But uh, 
it, it, generally speaking, what I don't want to do is to get to the end of the course and hear that, oh, so-and-so wasn't uh, really participating. If I'm going to hear that, I want to hear that, uh, you know, well before the halfway point of the course. And if we have problems, uh, work with me. We'll get it fixed. Okay? And if you're having a problem with your team, work with me. We'll get it fixed. Let's look. The rest of the syllabus, pretty, the syllabus is pretty much as you would expect. The correspondence between the number grades and the letter grades is pretty standard stuff. And the last part, um, the UWM and SOAS academic policies, they're both standard and important. Okay, so we have things here about um, uh, students with disabilities, religious observances, military duty, incompletes, discriminatory conduct, academic misconduct, complaints, grade appeals, okay? Now, it, these are all things that we take very seriously, and yet we talk about them every semester, and for the most part, there are links to click on to get to the details. So if you haven't gone to find out what the policies are on all this stuff, then do it. And also, if you have a problem or opportunity identified by this language, um, contact me. I take this stuff very seriously. Um, again, it may be at the end of the syllabus, and it may be standard stuff, but it's important stuff. So uh, that is it for the introductory lecture. I'm glad to have you guys in the course. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a fun course, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, having you here. So I'm going to say goodbye until next time. Bye-bye.